Okay, welcome everybody to our quarterly uh, um, CCCOER members meeting. Um, and uh, we are very pleased that you could join us. This is Una Daly, um, you know, the director of CCCOER, and I'm here with um, a lot of our executive council and uh, Paul Stacy, our executive director of OEC, Liz Yada, my assistant, and um, all of you wonderful members out there. So um, we're, we have we have a few things to run through with you, but um, I think we have some exciting uh, opportunities to talk about uh, around our executive council for next year, and also Paul has some um, collaborative opportunities with OEC and other news to share. And uh, so we'll go ahead and get started on that. First of all, I want to welcome our um, our new members. Uh, uh, as you can see, we've had actually quite a few new members since the fall of 2018. I'm just going to speak really quickly to our brand new members who've joined us um, in the last two months. And that's uh, West Virginia Northern Community College. And um, uh, our representative there is uh, Dr. Jill Lovelace, who is the Vice President of Academic Affairs. She's traveling today. So can't join us, but she wants to mention, wanted me to mention that they serve the Ohio Valley region, the northern panhandle of West Virginia. And um, a little bit of a, of a noise out there. I'm going to mute <laughs> the rest of you just so that we don't, yeah. Um, and um, I want to mention that um, while um, her college, Northern Community College, is new to um, CCCOER, Jill was on our executive council a couple of years ago um, when she was at Mojave College in Arizona. And our second uh, brand new college is Grossmont College in San Diego. Uh, in San Diego County, I should say, where uh, Katz Gustafson is located. And um, uh, Dave wanted me just to share a few things with you. They serve a diverse learning community of students, primarily from suburban locations in eastern San Diego County, um, and also surrounding communities and locations across the state and the nation. Um, they've grown their OER, Zero Textbook Costs, course sections from six uh, back in 2016 to 80 now in, in 2018. They had one of our California Zero Textbook Cost degree uh, initiatives. And some of you may know that uh, CCCOER has worked on that initiative as well. They also started a student OER internship program uh, this last fall, and they have two students who are um, advocating for OER on their campus and, um, and at some statewide conferences. Oh, and finally, Dave is also the author of a uh, now award-winning book as of last month, um, an open textbook called Blueprint for College Success. So we want to welcome both Jill and Dave um, to our community. And um, the, the last thing I wanted to mention was um, our Open Ed Education Week recap. And I want to um, just touch really quickly on um, the five faculty dialogues that uh, many of you participated in. Um, and you can see the subject areas there. Uh, we had one each day um, featuring um, two to three faculty from our community, uh, primarily members, who uh, taught in that area and had adopted OER. They were wonderful um, dialogues. Um, our average attendance was 32, uh, but English um, actually was the highlight of the week, and we had 45 people that day. It was also on Wednesday, so they might have picked a good day. But um, check those out if you haven't had a chance and uh, or send um, perhaps send individual um, uh, links to faculty in those disciplines who might be interested in OER or want to update their materials. And now I wanted to just open this up to see if uh, other folks wanted to share a little bit about what they did during Open Ed Week. Hi, Una. It's Mike Mills. Hi, Mike. I'll, I'll be glad to. At um, Montgomery College, what we did, and this was the second year we've done it, we have three campuses. So each um, of the campuses, each, three three straight days each day, we uh, we had a cake uh, that had our MC open on it and just thanked the students for uh, taking part in our OER efforts and 
gave us an opportunity to share with them a brochure and some information about our Z courses, um, and it was wonderfully received. Great, great. Sugar helps, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and and you know, when, one of the, the things that we did not realize until last year, uh, and it, it, it helps solve, at least addresses the problem. We have so many students who are with food insecurity. So we had, we had students that would come back for two or three pieces of cake, and we figured, you know, that may be the only food that they get for that day. So it, it served a, a dual purpose for us. Hmm. Okay, thank you for that. Um, anyone else want to share? Yes, for my college, Roxbury College, we have the kind of uh, have mean have student right now that have a question. What would you spend money on if you didn't, you did not buy textbooks, and then have them put like an answer on the kind of I mean the piece of paper and put against I mean on the wall, and then after that we use like a processing about like a word crowd to come up which one is the, the highest uh, national uh, reason we mean student gonna spend money on, something like that. It's amazing. And yesterday, we, the library, I mean, the Roxbury Community College hosts the uh, uh, Massachusetts Open Education Achieving as Access for All. And then we had around 70 attending, I mean, participants for this event. That's my... Yesterday, oh, just yesterday. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing, um, uh, Tatsa. Uh, and I know you're at Roxbury in Massachusetts. Um, very exciting. So what was the top uh, item that students selected as uh, what they would use that money that they now have to spend on textbooks for other something else? The, this mention, let me treat, treat the picture. Okay, they're, they're going to spend money on uh pay bills we could farm about 2.7 mm -hmm. percent pay bills <laughs> that was the big one yeah big one <laughs> yeah yeah i mean students have a lot of bills that they've got to take care of so that's wonderful anyone else want to share i just wanted to share this is Tina Ulrich at um, Northwestern Michigan College. Um, we celebrated going over the million dollar mark uh, this this spring. So it's like it's actually more like one point two five million dollars saved. Um, so I put a link to our uh, our our million dollar hawk owl in the drive there. If anybody wants to look at it. Congratulations, Tina. I remember when you guys were starting out. So it's very exciting. All right. Uh, this is Amy. Um, this was the first year since I've been in my job that Open Ed Week was not during Oregon's spring break. So we had a work group um, working all year to figure out how we wanted to plan for Open Ed Week. Um, and the group just did awesome stuff like creating a um, campus event menu um, of ideas and um, I'm just really grateful to the participants on that group. Um, and we had stuff going on all over the state. Um, and we also did like quick um, open ed challenges that were a very low bar to participation, like put an open license something on something and put it in OER Commons and then tweet that link. Um, and one of the work group members has and the um, National Novel Writing Month. And she thought about those challenges. And um, so that was what we based the idea on. Um, and I will say it was really wonderful and also um, really exhausting <laughs> to do my first open ed week. <laughs> Thanks for that, Amy. Yeah, and um, I know that uh, my assistant, Liz, was uh, happy to share the activities you had each day. And they looked like a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, if you have links to any of those things, Amy, please share them. I know you shared them. I know you shared them um, in the uh, our email listserv as well. Yeah, they were very creative. All right, I think we probably have time for one more. Would anyone else like? Yeah. To this is Philip from uh, Alamo down in San Antonio. Hi, Philip. Uh, we had. A, how y'all doing? Uh, we had a few events. We had uh, a couple events that were kind of running 
daily, which was like an identify your own OER uh, course attribute code, because we have that available for our students to search and faculty to use. So we have that every day at San Antonio College, as well as an OER uh, thank you, where students could go and, and put a letter or post it on the faculty door to show um, recognition for them. Uh, but we also had some um, faculty participating with the CCOER, uh, faculty, uh, English faculty dialogues. She was on that, Lori Coleman. Definitely. Uh, she's also the head at, at, at uh, the San Antonio College program for our OER initiative. Uh, I participated with the Texas Digital Library webinar, which started a series for uh, OER, getting started with OER, and we had our first one during that week, so we kind of kicked off that. Um, we're trying to get traction in Texas with uh, all types of institutions from four year to private to community colleges, and I'm participating with them to help kind of bring Texas up to speed. Uh, and lastly, we did another uh, Alamo Open selfie event with students at SAC on Monday to kick it off and basically ask how much they spent on textbooks and what would they do with that money. And that's on our Twitter feed as well, at Alamo Open. Great. Great. Thanks for sharing that, Philip. And yeah, and congratulations on the new webinar series, uh, the Texas webinar series. Looks really good. All right. So um, I know that uh, Liz Yotta, um, our CCCO, our specialist, has been collecting information from all of you. We're going to do kind of a, a blog posting recap on this. And so um, we really um, want to share all the great stuff everyone did. Okay, now I'm going to turn this over to Quill West, our president. Hi, everybody. Um, so we'd love to start, you know, usually we do introductions, but our group has swelled so to so big that it's hard for us to do um, fit in the business meetings. Um, so we are going to ask if you will help us by sharing some information about yourself and what's happening at your institution via the Google Sheet. Um, and I'm going to ask that somebody pop that in the chat window for me. Una, do you have it or you want me to try to find it? I'll, I'll do it. Yep. Okay. So um, we're actually thinking about planning um, because we always do kind of our next year's planning during the summer months. Um, but maybe we need to do some planning for summer. So we are wondering um, if you, what our members need and want and how we can collaborate with each other as we go into the summer and come out of it next year in the fall. So um, when you click on that Google Doc, that Google slide sheet, um, you will be asked to share some information about your college, um, contact people at your college, and what are your OER needs and asks? What are some things that you might want from the community? Um, and what do you have to offer and give to the community? What are you giving back? Um, and then what are your summer plans? That'll help us to know a little bit more about what we can do in service of your OER planning, but also in terms of how we can connect members with each other, because it could be that you know, one institution really, really, really needs somebody to um, need some advice on planning ancillaries while another institution has gone there already and is willing to share their stuff. So we would very much like to know, what are you interested in? What do you need? Um, so if you'll just take a minute for that. And towards the end of the meeting, we'll go back to that document and talk a little bit about what we see in it. Okay. Quill, do you mean what do we need specifically over the summer? Maybe, or actually you can think bigger than the summer. If you're like, you know what, I need something really strategic and big and you put it in there, it'll help us with planning. Um, I'm sorry, I said over the summer, but really what are your needs right now? What do you envision needing? Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying my talk. <laughs> okay, Una. Um, so now I get the pleasure of announcing again our executive council and the folks who help um, volunteer to keep our organization moving forward. So um, you see pictured here myself. Um, I'm working from the top to the right. <laughs> so um, and Cynthia, who is not joining us today, but who has been acting kind of to help us keep our um, membership lists together um, and communicate out with folks when we need information. Um, Kiri Dolly, who I'm hoping is joining us, has been managing our website and our blog in an amazing way for the past, I think, three years. Um, and Regina, I can see that you're here. Regina has been helping us to um, keep our 
um, professional development going strong. She has helped program most of our webinars. And for the past year, she's had the assistance and um, colleagueship of Matthew Bloom from um, the Mariposa Community College District, um, Scottsdale Community College. Um, Matthew has, you've heard his voice being the moderator on many of our webinars recently. Um, <laughs> and he is helping to direct that. And Mike Mills, who is helping us to build partnerships outside of CCCOER in service of our members and helping to put some strategic spin on the work we're doing. And finally, Nikki um, Stubbs, who has been kind of the one of the driving forces behind the new member toolkit, which we debuted this um, kind of late winter um, and has been helping us kind of keep us on track with some of our outside projects. We're so grateful for her work. Uh, and, and you can see the pictures here also of Una, who um, keeps us all organized and has been doing it for years. And we are so grateful that she's around to keep CCCOER plugging along. And Liz, who you have probably noticed, um, a lot of our communications have come from Liz recently. She's um, helping keeping us all, um, keeping our membership growing. She's helping to track paperwork. She's helping to capture us on webinars. Liz does all manner of lovely things for us. <laughs> um, so I wanted to say thank you to all of our executive council and staff, particularly as we're coming um, this is this is our spring meeting, so it's our chance. Well, our winter spring meeting. It's our chance to say thank you to all the people who have been doing service to CCCOER for the past year. So thank you to all of you. And that then gets to lead me into the plea for help. <laughs> um, okay, so. Um, You'll see here a picture of Smokey the Bear because, I don't know, this the idea of only you can help keep our community alive makes me happy and I hear his voice when I think about how do I decide that I'm going to do my professional organization service. Um, so CCCOER's council and leadership is done mostly through volunteer work and because we lean heavily on UNA. Um, and we need volunteers. Uh, it's time for me to step out of the president. I've been president for four years. So my term has come to an end and we're net ready for the next person um, who wants to be a leader. Um, and we also need people to help us with partnerships and protocol, professional development always, um, and helping to manage our website and blog and people who want to pick up special projects. So I'm, in a moment, I'm going to ask each of the folks to, who are on our executive leadership to explain what they do um, and, and how they decided to do what they do for us at CCCOER. Um, but if you are at all interested in taking on a role, with us, uh, we very much need you, uh, and we would love for you to fill out the Google form that is referenced here and that is about to be in the chat window. So let's get started, Una, if you wouldn't mind clicking forward for us. There's kind of a short listing here of each of the jobs, and I'm not gonna go first. I'm gonna actually ask Regina, since I can see you, I'm gonna ask you to go first. <laughs> would you mind explaining what you do for professional development for us? Sure. Um, actually, a lot of that starts with, of course, planning. Um, we usually plan. So the first time I did this, so that was, this is the third year, I believe. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. But what we did was we planned for it the whole academic year, which is um, fall and then spring. But um, so we usually do four um, webinars in the fall and another maybe we do five because we do until um we do our webinars until june right so june is our last webinar so um and i think it really helps if you're if you know a lot of folks <laughs> you know that are doing a lot of things um, around uh, OP, um, OER, open pedagogy. Um, if you have, if you have experience in putting up OER summits, OER workshops, either um, statewide or if you have experience in uh, program planning 
or um, basically just setting up those events, it would really be very helpful. Um, and also working closely with Una and um, Quill, of course, to identify what are the topics that our members want. And the thing that we use to inform those decisions um, is the survey that we send out to you. So it really is important that you fill that out because we use that as a gauge to plan for professional development. Because you know, we want to make topics, you know, that we offer for a PD to be relevant to our membership. So basically, that's it. And identifying um, the speakers that would be helpful um, or, you know, that would address the topics that we have lined up so far. So a lot of that is like planning, coordinating, um, you know, inviting the speakers and doing some moderation too. So, and we, we listen to our membership because, you know, this is a member-driven organization. We want professional development to matter, to, to be something that we all will benefit. So that's it. Please apply. Thanks, Regina. Um, Matthew, I see you're here too. Do you want to add anything to that since you have also been responsible for professional development this year? Uh, well, I mean, I think that uh, Regina did an excellent job uh, <laughs> describing everything. Uh, I found it, I find it to be um, a rewarding experience too, not just because of the fact that it keeps me connected um, on a regular basis with the, you know, the national open education community in a way that I might not where I, you know, just simply, you know, coming to the members meetings and stuff. So th that's all that's been uh, personally a rewarding thing. Uh, but uh, so I do recommend um, that that people uh, volunteer uh, in part because I'm just speaking for myself. I know that I sometimes am, am like really busy. And so I try to find the time to uh, do what I can in my capacity as a VP of professional development. But I'm not always able to, you know, contribute as much as I'd like. So the more kind of people who are interested in volunteering, the better. Very nicely put. Thank you. Um, Kiri, are you with us today? She's not here today, but um, Nikki is um, in the process of taking over some of this. So maybe Nikki okay. would like to say a few words. That would be lovely. Hi, everyone. Um, so Kiri has been doing this for um, Una and Quill. You'll have to um, several years, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but so I'm in the process of taking over um, some of the responsibilities that Kiri has been doing, which is um, maintaining the, um, the Find OER section of the website, along with guest blogs, um, coordinating, editing, and posting all of those. And she's also been handling updating the conferences um, Google spreadsheet. So upcoming conferences um, locally and nationally. And I think I mentioned this at our last uh, webinar, but if you have conferences that you're you know, inviting um, outside members, outside of your college or your institution, um, please let us know so that we can put that on the spreadsheet and keep everybody up to date uh, in case they want to come and visit. Um, and, um, and also, uh, if you want to help um, with the website and, and any of that, please let me know. Um, and if you, want, if you want to do a guest blog or you want help writing a guest blog, um, please reach out to us because we would love to do more of that. Thank you so much, Nikki. Um, so we, I want to hear from one more person. Mike, you have done such a lovely job stepping into a loosely defined role. If you would not mind telling us just a little bit about what you do, um, and then we will shift to, because we want to give Paul time to talk. Sure. Um, thanks, Quill. And, and just very briefly, one of the things we're trying to do with the partnerships is to make sure that we provide opportunities for our members to and CCCO OER to partner with um, external groups that have an interest in this space. And so we've been approached in a number of different occasions um, to partner with CCC OER. Uh, one example would be 
on um, OER for, for the trades and what that might look like. Um, and so, you know, we go into this with a deliberate approach, um, making sure that it's in the best interest of the members and certainly in the best interest of the organization. We're, we don't just jump into a partnership because it is the right thing to do at that particular moment. We want something that's sustainable and beneficial for everyone. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and there was one question in the chat window, Brittany, I want to respond to it real fast. We don't have any requirements that leadership meet in the same place. And in fact, often we're surprised we see each other at conferences. We do all of our meetings through Zoom uh, and we do a lot of connection through email and Google Docs. So that's mostly the travel requirement, although we love to have people meet up at conferences. Um, and I'm going to, I know that you're probably all curious to know about the other positions, but I'm going to let you go ahead and read about them here um, and fill out, if you're really curious, fill out that Google form I posted earlier. Um, Brittany, the meetings are kind of scheduled as needed or as the exec team decides to do it. Um, but if you'll go ahead and um, post that because then we can do a meeting, a follow-up meeting with folks who are interested in leadership. We would love to have that. Okay, Una, if you can advance us. <laughs> and just because, you know, Smokey the Bear makes me happy, I want you to also give a hoot and not pollute, but also give a hoot and join CCCOER's leadership. Thanks so much, Quill, and, um, and all the rest of our executive council for the amazing work they do. Um, I just wanted to respond to Brittany. We do meet monthly, Brittany, uh, during the school year. And then in the summer, when we tend to have projects that are going on more actively, um, those individual teams will meet more often. But um, as uh, Quill mentions, that they're almost exclusively virtual. I think um, Regina also mentioned that we definitely all meet at the Open Ed Conference. So that's the one time that we can guarantee we meet face to face, but we really encourage um, whenever we're going to a, a national or regional conference, we really encourage our members to um, check in with us and, and we can arrange events there as well. So thank you for those great questions. And now um, I'm going to stop sharing so um, I can have uh, Paul Stacy, who I think uh, many of you know. Um, Paul, let me just introduce Paul as he's getting ready to share his screen. Um, and Paul Stacy is our executive director of the Open Ed Consortium. Uh, he's entering his second year and he's uh, brought some uh, really amazing new uh, collaboration um, ideas and opportunities um, to our members. So are you, are you all set, Paul, there? Oh, okay. Um, actually, you know, I hadn't realized you wanted me to share my screen. I thought we were going to integrate the two, but that's um, fine. Let me go ahead and do that. I, I, can, I can do it as well, Paul. I downloaded oh, your... Okay, go ahead. If you, if you could bring it up, that'd be super helpful. I don't actually have it open. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So hi, everybody. Yeah, so um, it's super nice to be... Uh, hearing the activities of SUSE COER. I've been like a huge fan of the work that you're doing. And I think that the both the volunteer work and also the work of Una and Liz, of course, uh, and the executive is really um, a, a wonderful model for how to see open education be advocated for and be celebrated and acknowledged and I think that as I look at what the Open Education Consortia does uh, globally, in a lot of ways, I, I think of CCCOER as a model for what we do. And, and there are a few things that I thought I'd speak to you about today. One of those is just, you know, in many ways, we're sort of the home umbrella for um, CCCOER. The way I actually think of it is that, you know, we're kind of like the mothership and CCCOER is like kind of like this, this uh, module that gets to leave the mothership and, and do its work within the community college system of the United States. And, and yet we provide this kind of home base for, for CCCOER in, in terms of supporting UNIT and Liz and the activities of you all. So um, in some ways we're like the, the, the big version of CCCOER with a global mandate 
and with members all around the world. And, and it's been wonderful to see the growth of membership from CCC OER, but of course we have members from other countries as well, and we're always looking for and welcoming new members. Um, we just, yeah, go, yeah, so thank you, thanks, Simona, for doing this. Um, we just oh, finished the... Uh, I wasn't sharing my screen earlier. <laughs> That's all right. Um, we, just, we just had board elections, so one of the things that members are invited to do is to be on our board. So the Open Education Consortia has a 13-member board. We just um, invited all of our members to... Uh, run to be on our board and we had a really interesting selection of of people standing to be elected and and uh, I'm pleased to share the results here on this slide as you can see we just announced the results um, and you can see we have uh, new board members from Taiwan Alexis who's here Ale hi Alexis from USA um, and Sam from Fiji Constance uh, from Canada and Melissa also from the USA just as I'll, I'll ask you to s say a few words, Alexis, if you like, but just before I do, let me just highlight the regional composition of the board because for the Open Education Consortia, we aspire to have as much global diversity on our board as possible. And you can see that we have a reasonable representation, um, although I wish we had more Global South representation. So uh, that's always a challenge for us to, to have members stand for nomination from the Global South and then to garner enough votes to, to actually get elected. Um, we, we do have two board members who are appointed and so uh, the board has it as a task to do right now to replace one of them whose term is up. Um, and so that's another board member who will be added and, and in adding those board members, we sometimes take into account the regional distribution. But I really do want to welcome Alexis. And Alexis, if you'd like to say a few words, congratulations. Sure, thank you so much. And I thanks everyone on the call, because I know that um, I got a lot of support from the CCC OER community in my um, campaign to run for the board. So I appreciate the, the group here um, very much in my efforts. Um, I taught for about 15 years in the community college system. Um, in fact, Quill West was my entry point into the world of OER, so I am forever in her debt. And um, so um, uh, community colleges are definitely near and dear to my heart. Um, I actually, my physical office is at a four-year university now, but um, I work with the SUNY, the State University of New York system, and um, we have 64 schools, about half of which are community colleges. And so, um, you know, we are the leaders in, in the U.S. anyway of what's happening in the OER space. So I'm very happy to, to serve you all and represent what we're doing on this, in this capacity. So I appreciate input and welcome talking to all of you about how we can be, you know, making this project serve ourselves even better. Nice, and I look forward to seeing you <laughs> and working with you. Yeah, darn, uh, I have to go to Ireland now. <laughs> How tragic. <laughs> um, yeah, if you want to jump forward two slides, Una. So um, people have already been speaking about Open Education Week in terms of what CCC OER um, did, but here's the current homepage for the Open Education Week website which as you know is hosted by the Open Education Consortium. And, and to be honest, I, I'm really thrilled with the way that it's been sort of um, embraced by the open education community around the world and has become a major event in terms of celebrating and showcasing what's going on in open education. And as you can see, like over 6,000 participants from 123 countries, and, and I'm really delighted to also see that many of the events are now taking place, not just in English, but in other languages. And that's become, I think, a really important consideration as we start to look at the diversity, equity, and inclusion aspects of, of open education around the world. And, and as you know, during Open Education Week, there are events that happen both online, but also place-based, local-based events. And you can see the sorts of numbers that are that are happening in terms of what takes place over that week. And lots of resources from those events are available right from the Open Education 
uh, week website. And right away, we decided we would announce when it will take place next year because it, it really feels helpful to, um, to have it be in people's calendars so that they can begin planning for it and, and coming up with just the awesome creative ideas that people are using now to make Open Education Week work for them in, in, their, um, in, in their setting. So th thanks very much for participating and for making this event such a success. I'm looking to do more. Yeah, thanks. Um, I wanted to highlight a couple of things that are taking place this year. Um, one of them is that we will be looking at and are beginning to develop a strategy and plan for membership expansion. Um, as you know, most of our members are from higher education, which, which has been great for the years that we've existed so far, but now we're seeing um, open education spread beyond higher education to the primary and secondary levels and also be a tool that is used um, um, in the cultural sector and in, in also involves government in terms of policy and funding. Um, we're also looking at those who are uh, continuing to be uh, providers and, and new providers and service providers from the corporate sector. So. Um, I think as I consider how we'll expand our membership, it's, I, I believe our highest priority is to expand first into the K-12 to or what in, in the global context is talked about as primary and secondary. And I'm actually really pleased to see Constance Blomgren come onto our board in the, in the most recent elections because she's, her, her area of focus is in that space. And so um, as I think about our board and the representation of our board of what's going on with open education, it's helpful to have players who are not just working in higher education, but also in these other sectors. Um, we'll also be looking at um, uh, really trying to improve how membership works. And you can see some of the bullet points that I'm, I'm thinking of when I talk about that. That includes um, by what criteria can someone become a member? What are appropriate membership fees? Um, this has become a topic, especially for those from the Global South who don't have the kind of budgets that we in the Global North have. And it also, I think, is relevant in the context of uh, members who are consortia as opposed to members who are individual institutions. And, and recently, even today, actually, we had a staff meeting talking about how to improve the means by which members can participate. What are the activities that the Open Education Consortia offers all of its members? And, and when we were speaking about it today, I wanted to emphasize the difference between activities such as were just described for CCCOAR, which are taking place regionally within the United States, from activities that are more global. And so I, I could equally provide Google Docs where I'd be seeking your input on how would you like to engage with the open education community globally, not just within the US or within your state or within your system and region. And, and when we think about open education and its promise, one of the benefits is of course the sharing and receiving from others of uh, open education materials and resources that they've developed. And that is relevant in a global context. And I think as we begin to see the growth of open education and we'll be We'll be looking to support more and more of that kind of activity across our membership globally, not just regionally. So that's something I wanted to highlight. Um, yeah, let's go forward, do we? And thanks for doing slides. <laughs> um, another thing that we've been doing is uh, looking at what we're calling regional nodes. And when I think of the Open Education Consortia and its global mandate to support all of our members around the world, um, as we see open education unfolding in different parts of the world, it's become increasingly clear that the priorities and the way open education is working in different parts of the world differs. And so in some ways, you could imagine CCCOER as a U.S. regional node of the Open Education Consortia, servicing the colleges of the U.S. as a community of practice, webinars, case studies, and so on. And we recently just started doing something similar in Latin America. So we formed a working group of 12 different open education leaders from across 10 Latin America countries. Uh, we brought them together actually uh, just a couple of weeks ago and did a kind of concentrated um, set of workshop days to explore how they would 
potentially work together and what are they doing currently? And I thought I'd highlight just some of what's emerging out of that um, Latin America group because I think it's interesting to compare it to what CCC OER is doing. So they identified four major areas for collaboration. One is around a teacher and faculty training. That's an area of focus for the Latin America group. A second is around policy and strategy development. A third is around infrastructure. And by infrastructure, they don't just mean technology. They also are speaking about open education resources. And lastly, they think that it will be really important to produce reports that essentially describe the state of open in Latin America to raise its profile and awareness of what's taking place in that part of the world. And so um, these participants are going to uh, work together on these four areas of collaboration and will be um, developing essentially a kind of community practice similar to CCC OER for that purpose. I, I do think of CCC OER and also this Latin America regional node as kind of prototypes for how we might build out additional nodes. And when I think about the Open Education Consortia and its and its development of, of additional nodes over time, I think about them not just regionally, but potentially topically as well. So you could imagine that there may be a regional node that is not premised on it representing a region, but on a particular type of open education or a particular topic in open education. Thanks. Una, if you could go forward. Um, I also wanted to highlight that Open Education Global is coming up our major conference. We've moved it to the end of the year. It used to be in the uh, around uh, the April time frame, but we moved it to the end of the year. And this year it's taking place the 26th and the 28th of November in Milan at Politecnico de Milano. Um, you can see the website, the link to the website there. And um, and so I encourage you to have a look. Um, the call for proposals is currently open. Actually, let me just place a link to it. And, and, um, and it's a very um, innovative call this year. The tracks are different from what you might have in a traditional conference. And even the formats are being shaken up a little bit. So, um, so have a look. And I'm just looking at some of the questions which I have failed to answer. <laughs> but, but let me just quickly say to, to Lori, uh, I do think that it is possible for a community college in the Midwest to collaborate globally. But, and I think that that's part of the role of the Open Education Consortia is to provide an opportunity for those expressions of interest in collaboration and identification of projects or initiatives that might serve as the basis for collaboration to take place. Um, and yes, one way that that happens is through the Open Education Global Conference. A lot of the other open education conferences are more regionally based. I know I met many of you at the Open Education Conference in Niagara Falls um, last year, and, and some of you perhaps will be at OER 19 in the UK. Um, uh, but the Open Education Global Conference really does try to embrace and represent and include everyone from all around the world. So it's perhaps a more diverse lens and perspective of what's taking place in open education. And, um, and yes, oh great, um, Lori Beth is gonna come. Fantastic, I hope, I hope that works for you um, and, and others. I really invite you to, to come. Um, let's go forward, Una. Yeah, here are the tracks. I just thought I wanted to make sure that people saw that there's a, a way that your work fits within the Open Education Global Conference. So strategies around development of open education resources, practices, communities, and looking at cross-boundary collaborations within countries and between countries for that to take place. Well, how to build out the various roles, the different roles that are now emerging around open education as well as practices like, like open pedagogy, as you see in the third track, um, and also to look at policies. So there's very strong global interest in seeing policies which might be thought of as originating from above, meeting the grassroots work that's happening in open education and generating real synergies between the two to, to kind of generate the most impact and the momentum around open education. And so 
If you're interested, um, the call for proposals due date is the 1st of May. And uh, um, yeah, I've already put a link to the call in the chat. So I hope some of you can come. Um, and lastly, I wanted to highlight that we do, and have been doing this for quite some time, give out awards of excellence for open education. And the, the call for nominees, so if any of the awesome colleagues that you've heard from today, or perhaps people who aren't even in this webinar, but you think are, uh, have merit for receiving an award, um, I encourage you to nominate them. Uh, the nominations are now open. There's a call for people to be nominated um, here on this slide. We've kept the awards the same as they were last year. So there are individual awards, student awards, and then an extensive array of awards for open resources, tools, and practices. Um, and so uh, this year, uh, we'll likely also, one of the things that we're examining is the award ceremony, which usually takes place at the Open Education Global Conference. Um, I think this year we'll, we'll change that ceremony up a little bit. And we also are wanting to have there be an opportunity for each award recipient that's at Open Education Global to actually have a slot in the program so that they can present their great work. Um, but these are some of the highlights. Um, we've got lots of stuff going on at Open Education Consortia. It's really an exciting time. And, um, and I'm just um, th so thrilled to have all of you be our members. And I'm really um, kind of ambitiously, I think, looking to include primary and secondary in the mix and also encourage ways for, for networks of collaboration to be built um, across regions and across countries. And I'll just stop there, Una, but welcome any questions people might have. Yes, let's, let's take a few minutes for questions for Paul. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> you've, just, you've just overwhelmed them. You've no, I know. I Actually, I have a question. I, um, sure. This is Amy, and were the links to the... Um, call for proposals and call for nominations. Um, were those on the CCC OER listserv or, or I guess if- um, They went out on Twitter, or, but we need to send those. Um, it, yeah, because then it's so easy for me to forward to my people in Oregon. Yes, we will do that this okay, afternoon. Okay, thank you. Yay, Amy, thank you. Amy, you're reminding me that maybe we should do some kind of quick um, update about the meeting that you can forward to your list because i was reading your thing saying tell me write a quick note saying we need people to volunteer so i'll put together a summary of this meeting and you can send it out well cool so thanks um i mean i'll just stop talking Una, but with i'll say one last thing which is that um, one of the things that I'm interested in doing is speaking more directly to members. And so as you think about your own strategies and as potentially you start to get interested in, in global collaborations, I just invite you to, to reach out through Una or Liz or to, to me directly. Um, I'd welcome having some one-on-one -on -one conversations around strategy, interests, and, and what you think might be um, work that the Open Education Consortium can do to support both what you do and what you might be interested in doing from a collaboration point of view. Great. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Paul, for, for joining us. And we just have a few, uh, few other little uh, reminders. So I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> sorry for this. Uh, we're going to, ah, sorry. Always switching slide slides is always fun. <laughs> uh, there we go. All right. So um, I think the next thing we want to talk about is the invoices. Liz, are you um, you prepared to just talk about? We just want to catch you up on what's happening with 2019 invoices, and then talk a little bit about 2020. You're not actually sharing your slides yet. I know I'm not because I thought because <laughs> I, I but I will in just a moment. I just okay. need, to, I need to get it set up.
Okay, well, if you haven't um, received your invoice or you're not sure if you did, um, go ahead and send me an email and I'll, I'll uh, figure out the status of your invoice and payment. Um, we also, looking forward to next year, we want to make sure that you know that we will be increasing the fees to $800 um, for 2020. Um, this is a bit of, still a discount over a regular OEC membership, um, and we don't. We know it's a bit of a um, increase, but we don't inc uh, think that we'll have such a big increase um, for a little for, for a little while. Um, and I think that was all I needed to say. Anything else, Una? Nope, that was it. Thank you, Liz. So yeah, just just to clarify what Liz was saying, our our membership fees were six fifty this last year, and so they are going up to eight hundred in twenty twenty. We wanted to let you know because um, we know that your budgets are due soon, and so um, it's important to know even when it's you know one hundred and fifty dollars. It's important for you to know that so that you can include that. And we appreciate your support. All right. Um, I kind of volunteered Mike to, to uh, speak to this slide, and I did that at the last minute. Um, Mike, are you comfortable speaking to this slide? And, and once again, Mike is um, our partnerships VP for CCCOER. Uh, sure. Um, you know, as, as Una said, um, we're, we're always looking for, for partners um, and, and what that may mean for members of CCC OER and you know one of the things that we're, we're currently looking at and, and Una or, or Paul may uh, be able to provide some more details in, in an area that, that I, um, if I leave any gaps um, is a consortial discount for Pressbooks EDU. I, there are a number of schools that have started developing their own textbooks looking for a platform to share those um, materials and one of the areas that might be beneficial for our members is a Pressbooks uh, education uh, site and it's all exploratory at this point um, but if it's something that you think you might be interested in let us know um, and you know we'll continue to explore that possibility. Yeah th thank you Mike um, and there's a few other bullet items here as well about um, you know, conference discounts for our members and, and uh -huh. I think, yeah, m many other things. But thank you for covering that, um, Mike. Paul, would you like to add something? Um, well, I mean, as I said, one of the things we, we want to do is acknowledge that members should get a discount on OEC events. And so um, I was I was working last week on what the registration fees should be for Open Education Global, for example, and and so we want to provide members with a discount um, and also sustaining members with even a larger discount. Um, and then I think uh, last year some of you participated in the Open Education Leadership Summit, which which really was an an effort to generate some collaboration opportunities globally, and so. As I look at what um, the Open Education Consortia is trying to move forward with, we, we are trying to build out a series of benefits and uh, participation activities, both for senior leaders within organizations and institutions and for those on the front lines doing the actual work. And so uh, when I look at professional development, um, I, I'm thinking about it in that kind of two-pronged way of, of uh, what is the professional development opportunities for our, our senior administrators as well as for, for faculty and, uh, and librarians and, and others that are supporting open education. Um, and the Pressbooks example is, is um, the start of a potential larger um, benefit that we would explore building out, which, which I've been calling with my staff shared services. So if you could imagine Pressbooks as being an example of a potential shared service across a consortia of organizations, um, then one of the things we're exploring is, well, what other possible services could similarly be shared? 
in a collaborative way and at a price point that's lower than what any one institution could could uh, get on their own. So lots of things that I, I think are, are um, being developed in this area. And I, I really am looking to hear from our members about what, what it is they would like to see more of. And Paul and Una, if I could jump back in and, and address the collaboration opportunities that CCC OER membership provides. And it, it touches on something Lori Beth had asked earlier about a small college in the Midwest. Uh, you know, my, my school is located in Maryland and we offered our faculty a fellowship on open pedagogy tied around the uh, United Nation SDGs. And this summer, we're partnering with um, Kwantlen Polytechnic University to connect faculty from both institutions to develop open assignments, renewable assignments. So there are tons of opportunities for schools anywhere in the United States to connect internationally. Um, and I think CCC OER provides that opportunity. Great. That's exciting, Mike. Thanks, Mike and Paul. And um, I think we're, we're going to go through this fairly quickly. Um, and I can't remember. Um, Nikki, were you, you were going to talk about the, uh, the conferences. Yeah, and I mentioned that earlier. Um, you can look at our spring fall conference list um, on the website under Get Involved. And it's the last option, 2019 Open Education Conferences. Um, and again, just if you have um, conferences, even if you do an, you know, an online or a virtual conference that you'd like to invite um, the community to, please do let us know and we can make a note of that uh, on the spreadsheet as well. Great. And, um, you know, just in the interest of time, I'm going to speak to this. Um, I think everyone knows that the Open Ed Conference is coming up. Um, in October of this year, and it will be in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, and we have a number of folks, including Regina Gong, who's on the um, who's on the planning committee for that. And we always um, have some kind of a social event um, and other activities during that conference. So this is the largest U.S. Open Ed conference. Um, so um, we hope that many of you can make it to that conference as well. And let's see. I think. Uh, Matthew, do you want to speak to our spring webinars real quick? What's yeah, left? Sure. Um, I can just say a couple things. I mean, as you can see on the slide here, we've got uh, three webinars planned for the rest of this semester here, one of which is only a couple weeks away. Um, and I think the next slide actually gives a little bit more detail on that one. But then later we've got um, some the OER and Z, uh, Zero Textbook Cost Degree Pathways webinar. And then in June, the regional models for OER implementation. So a variety of, of topics there. and. Um, like Regina mentioned earlier, we tried to choose topics that were um, uh, that were demonstrated as of interest to the community based on the survey that we sent out last year. So we have those that we're doing, and please, uh, you can see the registration um, link right here, so I would encourage you to do that. And then if you want to go to the next slide, I think it has to do, yeah. So the dual enrollment webinar here, um, it's, I think that the, the dual enrollment is something that I personally am looking into uh, trying to, you know, enter into in terms of work we're doing at Maricopa with OER. And so I'm personally looking forward to this here. You can see that um, Nikki Stubbs, one of our um, executive council members, is going to be one of the speakers there as well. So I do encourage, we encourage you to um, check out this very interesting webinar coming on April 3rd. Great, and Nikki, I think this is yours. Yeah, so we have our annual member survey coming up, um, and it'll be released um, probably by May 1st. So um, really, it helps us set the direction for next year. We wanna thank all those that completed the survey last year. Um, and really, the survey is about um, what we can do for you and what your priorities are for the next year. Um, what types of um, collaborations would you welcome? How can we help you achieve your goals um, on a, um, a national or global level? Um, and, and really, it's for you to help us plan. So um, we want to encourage everyone that can to please complete the survey when it comes out. Um, that way we can try to plan for next year um, and, and make these meetings and 
um, and the events that we have um, extremely relevant to what your needs are. Great, thanks Nikki. Uh, Quill, I think this is you. <laughs> I think this is just a big last summary slide um, reminding us all of the things that we need to know. So our all members meeting, um, the next meeting we have will be June 11th. That's a Tuesday at um, 3 Eastern, um, noon Pacific time. And the reason for that meeting will be to go over what our priorities are for next year based on the survey um, and a few other things, more information. Uh, please volunteer to be an exec team member and you will love it. It is a great group to work with. It is always um, keeps me on my toes professionally and helps me grow myself as a person. And I love that. Um, please take the, the survey. It's coming out in early May. Please take it by June 1st. It helps us know what's important to our members so that we can make good decisions. And then <laughs> do like I did, go back through your email, find your, your invoice and make sure you get that paid. Um, okay. Um, and as always, there are many ways to get involved in CCCOER, and we welcome all members um, and all types of involvement. So uh, please join us. Our website's a good way to find out about all of these things, but we need case studies, we need blog postings, we need webinar speakers, we need all kinds of things to keep this community practice alive and well. Thank you all so much for being here and for sticking around for a couple minutes longer. Um, can we answer any questions from the community? We didn't give a lot of time for speak other speakers today. Thank you. I guess that's all. Everybody else is doing that by text, so I thought I'd just pop in here by voice. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to my...